Did you know that 99% of the universe is made of plasma? It's not just the stuff in neon signs or lightning. It's the dominant state of matter in stars, interstellar space, and even our own ionosphere. Plasma is often referred to as the fourth state of matter. But what if it's really more than that? What if it's not just matter, but something alive? What if it holds the key to understanding the origins of life on Earth and beyond? In today's video, we're taking a closer look at the article titled, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, Extraterrestrial Life, Plasmoids, Shapeshifters, Replicons, Thunderstorms, Lightning, Hallucinations, Aircraft Disasters, Ocean Sightings. We're gonna explore this article to determine whether plasmoids, those highly charged plasma entities, could be alive and perhaps be the building blocks of life as we know it. So what would make someone even think that plasma could be alive? After all, it's just the fourth state of matter, right? Well, if you spend enough time observing plasma, you might start noticing some things that are lifelike behaviors. So let's get into some specifics. Plasmoids exhibit behaviors that mimic biological life. Observed in laboratories, plasmas frequently split into smaller, identical entities reminiscent of cell division. This isn't just speculation. Replication has been recorded in experiments on dusty plasmas where charged particles self-organize into stable, life-like clusters. Plasmoids also emit smaller plasma forms that interact with their environment in a way that can look purposeful. In natural environments, plasmoids interact with other plasmas in a manner that appears intentional. For example, they exhibit targeting and collision behaviors where one plasmoid seems to pursue another, often resulting in dramatic energy release or transformations. But could this just be electromagnetic phenomena? Or are we seeing the plasma equivalent of predation or competition? We've also seen plasmoids change shape rapidly in response to external stimuli. They can transition from spheres to rings, spirals, or even fractal-like patterns. This flexibility reminds us of the adaptability of living organisms. But what does this really mean? These behaviors challenge the traditional definition of life. If plasmoids are not alive, why do they display organization and interaction at a level that appears to go beyond random physical forces? Plasmoids also frequently exhibit internal voids that resemble nuclei surrounded by layers of charged particles. These voids might function as chemical chambers, creating isolated environments where unique reactions can occur. Laboratory studies on dusty plasmas show that these voids can trap particles and facilitate complex interactions that would otherwise be impossible. It's important to remember that plasmoids can generate intense electromagnetic fields that could catalyze chemical reactions. For example, lightning, essentially a natural plasma, has been shown to form amino acids and other organic compounds under the right conditions. Could plasmoids act as a similar catalyst on a much larger scale or more organized scale? The key question here is, are these voids simply the result of physics or do they represent a primitive form of biological organization? If so, could plasmoids be a bridge between the inorganic matter and living systems it's also important to note that plasmas exhibit remarkable self-organization even under chaotic conditions. Somehow, they manage to find order. Experiments demonstrate that dusty plasmas naturally form stable, organized structures such as lattice-like patterns and rotating clusters. These structures are often compared to cellular organization because they maintain stability despite external disturbances. For example, particles within a plasma can align into filamentary patterns, which scientists have likened to the cytoskeletal framework of cells. Plasmoids efficiently manage energy within their boundaries as well, cycling charges in ways that mimic metabolic processes in living organisms. 
This energy cycling might enable plasmoids to maintain their structure over time. This is a key characteristic of life. You see, self-organization is a hallmark of living systems. If plasmoids can organize themselves into stable, lifelike entities, does this imply that they are alive? Or at least prebiotic? I think there's a pretty good argument that it does. Now that we've explored why plasmoids might qualify as living entities, let's take it a step further. Could plasmoids have played a role in the origin of life, either on Earth or somewhere else in the universe? Well, we know that plasmoids can serve as chemical reactors for prebiotic chemistry. This is because they have electromagnetic fields that create high energy environments where particles can collide, react, and form complex molecules. This is similar to the way lightning, a natural plasma, catalyzed amino acid formations in the Miller-Urey experiment. These reactions are not limited to simple molecules. Under the right conditions, plasmoids could potentially catalyze the formation of RNA-like polymers, offering a possible route to life. The intense energy within plasmoids could break bonds in simple molecules, allowing atoms to rearrange into more complex organic compounds. This is essentially plausible in environments rich in water vapor, methane, or carbon dioxide, where these reactions are thermodynamically favorable. So if plasmoids acted as catalysts for prebiotic chemistry on early Earth, they might have kick-started the molecular processes that eventually led to life here. But what about elsewhere? Well, we know for a fact that plasmoids are not confined to Earth. They thrive in cosmic environments and can act as universal catalysts. Planets like Jupiter and Saturn are hot spots for plasmoid activity due to their intense thunderstorms, ionospheres, and turbulent atmospheres. Confirmed electrical conditions in these planets' atmosphere mimic the chaos of early Earth where plasmoids might have catalyzed similar prebiotic reactions. Cosmic dust and meteorites often contain amino acids and other organic compounds. When these materials interact with plasmoids, the resulting chemical reactions could assemble even more complex molecules. This suggests that plasmoids might not only see life on Earth, but could also act as agents of panspermia, spreading the ingredients of life across the cosmos. So could this mean life is everywhere? Well, if plasmoids act as chemical reactors throughout the universe, they could be a universal mechanism for jump-starting life, making life more common than we think. We've explored how plasmoids display lifelike behaviors, self-organize into stable structures, and act as natural reactors for prebiotic chemistry. While some of this remains speculative, the science suggests that plasmoids might represent a fourth domain of life, or at least the seeds of life. Let me know in the comments below what you think about plasmoids. Do you think they're alive? Do you think that they're responsible for seeding life here and on other planets? I look forward to reading your responses. For a deeper dive into the full 109 page article that inspired this video, check out my longer analysis. This is just touching the surface of all the fascinating science that was present in the article. 